Today we're going to cover conversions, uh, which is a very good way to use the backdoor Roth strategy uh, to open up a Roth account if you can't afford to have one. So first of all, let's talk about what a Roth is for those of you who might be a little, a little unsure of exactly the difference between a Roth and a traditional. Um, so it's for individuals of all ages. Um, it, you can be retired and as long as you have earned income, you can still open a Roth. Right. You could also be even under age. And as long as you have earned income, you did some chores, you washed the car, you mowed a lawn, you can also earn income at a very young age. I think our youngest client is two years old right now. <laughs> uh, two years old right now, but a baby, when they started now, you might ask, how does a baby get income? Well, uh, uh, this Their parents, parents yeah, of a deal. business and uh, were having her model for the business. So she was, she or he was making um, income from that modeling job as a baby and has had a Roth IRA since before she could walk. He could walk. <laughs> I actually can't remember if it's a girl or a boy. So what are the benefits of a Roth IRA? You can get tax-free earnings and no taxation and withdrawals. Now, a traditional will grow tax-free, but when you take distributions, um, once you're over 59 and a half, you will be taxed at regular income. So if I was to take out $1,000 from my traditional IRA, when I was 59 and a half, I'm not yet, um, then I would have that $1,000 added to my income come tax time. So when I did my 2020 taxes, it would show that I had an additional $1,000 of income. Well, if you do that with a Roth, it does not show up as income. You are not taxed on it. As long as your Roth is qualified and to be qualified, it has to be open uh, for at least five years. And that's five years from the time you open your original Roth. So the very first time you open a Roth, it has to be open five years from that time. Now, if you open an additional Roth or if you transfer funds to a different custodian, that does not restart the clock. So, um, you have uh, you have tax-free earnings and you can invest for retirement and still access your funds. So if you do contributions, you can take contributions out at any time that you need some additional funds. Um, but for your earnings and anything else like that, you do have to wait until you're over 59 and a half and the Roth has been open uh, for five years for those to be tax-free. So here's the fun one. As long as you have earned income, you can contribute at any age. If you are 80 years old and, and still have a, a little bit of a side job there because you just like working, I say this because there are members of my family who are doing just that, um, you can still contribute to a Roth. So, Let's talk about the tax advantage growth and the difference between a traditional and a Roth. And then we'll get into different ways to fund it. So a traditional IRA is going to give you a tax write-off the year that you make it. So as long as you're within certain income limits, your uh, contribution will be tax deductible. Now with a Roth, these are post-tax funds. So you have already paid taxes on the money that you put into a Roth, and that's why it has the capability of growing tax-free. Now, both of them have the tax deferred growth, um, but you can have tax-free retirement from your Roth. So contributions at any age, that was not true before the SECURE Act. It used to be once you were, um, 72 and a half, you could not contribute to a traditional anymore. Now, even if you're in RMD, which is when you have to take required minimum distributions, um, you can still contribute to a traditional, just like a Roth, um, at any age, once again, as long as you have earned income. Uh, the flexibility with your distributions, like I said before, you can um, take out contributions 
made out of pocket to your Roth at any time. Um, you can increase your net income at retirement with your Roth because um, you're not going to be paying taxes. And again, it's it's how many things can you say you're not going to be paying taxes? Um, right. Every single time I talk to a client, they are astounded or completely shocked. And they ask me again and again, tax free. And I'm like, yes, 100 percent. When you get to take that distribution, regardless of any kind of gains inside of your account, you've already paid your taxes on that. So whatever growth, any kind of income that happens with inside of your account is completely tax free upon distribution. That is amazing, especially for some clients who cannot have their gross income go too high for certain programs. So this is an amazing opportunity for any age to be able to take that. And one little sneak peek, similar to education accounts, for whatever reason, if you ever wanted to take your Roth IRA and use for higher education, you can do that as well. Exactly. Now, there are income restrictions uh, with a Roth IRA. If you make too much money, you can still have an IRA, but you can't contribute to it. So um, Roth IRAs don't have RMDs during your lifetime, so your money can stay in the account and keep growing tax-free. A traditional, when you hit 72 now, um, you have to start taking RMDs, although not this year. Uh, because of the CARES Act, no one has to take their RMD this year. So that's a huge benefit for a lot of people to not have to start taking their RMDs um, this year. I, I don't know if that'll continue next year. It's uh, things change quickly and we keep on track of it for you. Um, you can also leave a tax-free inheritance uh, to your heirs. Uh, Non-spouse beneficiaries, that would be uh, children, anyone you're not married to, um, who inherit your Roth, they will have to take RMDs. They'll have to take required minimum distributions from any IRA that you leave to them. But unlike a traditional, in the Roth, the taxes have already been paid. So when they take those distributions, they will not be taxed on them. Um, it's, it's an amazing way to leave a legacy for, for your kids. Okay, here's the kicker. Are you eligible for a Roth? So if you make too much money, you cannot contribute. So let's take a look at this. If you are married and filing jointly and you have to make less than $196,000. I, I can honestly say I'm not going to have that problem. <laughs> um, if you make less than $196,000, you and your spouse are both eligible to contribute up to $6,000 a year or $7,000 if you're over 50 um, to a Roth IRA. Um, if you're married filing separately, uh, it's really kind of slanted against you. You can't make more than $10,000 um, and that's your modified adjusted gross income. So that is what MAGI stands for, for anyone who doesn't know some of the back office lingo or acronyms. Um, you just want to make sure that you're aware of this. If you ever have a question or confused by some of the acronyms or letterings or certain words, feel free to call us and ask us, uh, email us. You can always put a comment over here as well. We're more than happy to explain some of these terminology that's not always in layman's terms. And you know how it goes. We're so used to using these initials that sometimes they will just fly out of our mouths and we'll forget to tell you what they are. If that ever happens, just type in the comments and say, what the heck is a Maggie? <laughs> um, so there is one good thing. If you are married and filing separately, um, or if you're the head of the household, you can use the limits for single people if you've not lived with your spouse um, within the past year. Um, but again, talk to your CPA. Uh, they will be able to steer you right and they'll be able to tell you exactly what your modified adjusted gross income is. Um, now, if you're single, you need to make less than $122,000 to be able to contribute directly um, to a Roth IRA. Now, all of this is explained very, very well in IRS publication 590A. 